Good afternoon, alien enthusiasts. Stay tuned to the end of the video where I'm going to give you an exciting update on my upcoming trip to Australia, where I will be looking into one of the most famous mass sightings of UFOs in history. Carl Sagan had many things to say about extraterrestrial civilizations, but the only one that astronomers seem to remember is the old adage, with extraordinary claims must also come extraordinary evidence. However, other things that Carl Sagan talked about further defined the nature of extraordinary evidence and the sorts of things that we should look for in the universe when we're trying to find evidence of alien civilizations or intelligent life. Intelligent life, for example, or sophisticated civilizations tends to build in geometric patterns. For example, if you look at all of these natural features in the deserts of Algeria, you can see a roughly circular shape, but it's obviously an impact crater and not something man-made. It's not perfectly circular, that is. If you compare this, of course, to these irrigated plots in the Saudi Arabian desert, it's very obvious that these were created by man. They're just too perfect, and there's entirely too many of them to have come about by chance. So when we are searching the universe for evidence of civilizations, perhaps we should look for similar geometric patterns, things that defy natural explanations shapes that should not have come about by chance. And it looks like we may have come across one, although of course the astronomical community will not accept this as being a possible techno signature simply because that's what the scientific community does. But when it comes right down to it, they're having a hard time explaining it any other way. This perfect sphere, so perfect that we can't even really determine where it is, how far away it is, how big it is, and of course, most importantly, what it is. Good afternoon, alien enthusiasts, and once again, welcome to the Angry Astronaut. So, uh, one thing that we always find with these new discoveries that are made in astronomy, when something is difficult to explain, some sort of phenomena has defied all natural explanation. The first thing that's always said in the articles that cover these particular discoveries is that it's not aliens. Although nobody ever really says why it isn't aliens, only that it can't be aliens, it must be something else, although we don't know what it is. And this most recent discovery is one of the most frustrating of all, in my opinion. It is a phenomena that not only has defied description because it is so unusual, we can't even accurately determine how far away it is, how big it is, and of course, what it is. All of the explanations seem to point towards a supernova remnant, However, there are so many things about this discovery that simply do not say supernova remnant, that bear no resemblance to supernova remnants that have been discovered in the past. So, of course, after all natural explanations have fallen flat, at least up to this point, no one is going to have the courage to investigate the possibility of an artificial explanation of an extraterrestrial civilization that that might have actually made something like this. Because as Carl Sagan pointed out in years past, some of the most obvious techno signatures that we should look for are visual techno signatures that resemble something in mathematics or something in geometry. And in this case, we're talking about a perfect sphere an absolutely perfect sphere that's many light years across. In a discovery that has astronomers both captivated and perplexed, a mysterious, perfectly spherical object, dubbed Telelos, which by the way means perfect, has been detected in the vast expanse of deep space. Discovered and observed exclusively through its radio emissions by the Australian Square Kilometer Array Pathfinder, or ASCAP, 
radio telescope, this celestial object bears a resemblance to what's called an SNR, or supernova remnants. But other clues found about Telelos have thrown that theory into doubt. With data collected by the powerful ASCAP radio telescope, a group of international astronomers have found a deep space object that is almost perfectly round, an exceedingly rare occurrence. Called Teleos, and I think I mispronounced it the last time, the bubble is unique not just for its shape, but also its visibility solely within the radio continuum frequencies. And as you can see, in the disordered and random appearance of the radio galaxy. In other words, this is space as seen through a radio telescope. This thing really stands out compared to everything else in the image. Now, most of these characteristics bear a striking resemblance to SNR or supernova remnants, the expanding shells of gas and dust left behind after a massive star explodes. However, the similarities end there, as Teleos exhibits several unusual properties that defy a straightforward explanation. A team of astronomers led by astrophysicist Miroslav Filipovich of the Western Sydney University in Australia published a research paper recently about this discovery, and the paper points out one of the most puzzling aspects about Teleos, and that is its unusual dimness. Despite its strong radio emissions, the object is remarkably faint compared to typical supernova remnants. Furthermore, and perhaps even more perplexing, is the complete absence of expected X-ray emissions. Supernova remnants are typically energetic environments that produce significant X-ray radiation, a signature completely missing from Teleos. This lack of X-ray activity casts serious doubt on the whole SNR hypothesis and has left the research team scratching their heads. So here are some of the problems with the various supernova remnant theories that have been put forward about this object. If this is an old supernova remnant, and that would explain why it doesn't give off a great deal of energy anymore, only faintly glowing in the radio spectrum, then it shouldn't be this perfectly spherical anymore. Something should have happened along in the galaxy, some sort of gravitational influence that would have deformed the shape of this supernova remnant, because the older it is, the bigger it is it becomes. And if it is indeed the remnant of, say, a Type 1a supernova that happened quite some time ago, that means the sphere has to be at least 157 light years across. And this also means that it's over 10,000 years old. That being the case, it's a little difficult to believe that nothing has happened long to deform the shape of this sphere over all that time. I mean, a super supernova remnant that's this perfectly spherical is incredibly rare to begin with. Something this big and this old remaining spherical is simply without precedent. But if it were a more recent supernova explosion, in which case we're talking about a type 1AX supernova where the supernova leaves behind a so-called zombie star remnant, well, then the supernova would be about 11 light years across and only 3,262 light years away, but at the same time, it should be a lot more energetic if it's happened that much more recently, in other words, less than a thousand years ago. But whichever way you slice it, Teleos is a bizarre object in the extreme. For one thing, most supernova remnants just aren't this symmetrical. Most of them, as you can see here, are very asymmetrical in shape, even supernova explosions that have happened very recently. And of course, in addition to that, we can't see this thing in any spectrum of light except radio frequencies. It isn't visible, it doesn't give off any X-ray radiation, and it doesn't give off any infrared radiation either. This thing is completely invisible except in a narrow range of radio frequencies. And so the paper that these folks wrote concludes as follows, quote, all possible scenarios have their challenges, especially considering 
considering the lack of X-ray emission that is expected to be detectable given our evolutionary modeling. While we deem the Type 1A scenario the most likely, we note that no direct evidence is available to definitively confirm any scenario, and new sensitive and high-resolution observations of this object are needed. So, for a moment, for the sake of argument, let's say that this thing is the product of an extraterrestrial civilization. What might it be? Just a techno signature to announce their presence? To announce that an advanced civilization somehow made this thing? That doesn't seem tremendously likely. What seems more likely to me is the notion that this might be some kind of unusual alien megastructure. Megastructures that absorb solar energy and convert it into power could theoretically bleed off excess energy in the radio spectrum only. This would explain why it gives off no x-rays, no heat energy, no visible light, nothing except for a little bit of radio energy. But still, we're talking about an enormous megastructure, at the very least, several light years across. How is that possible? Well, what if it wasn't always this big? What if long ago a megastructure was built around a star to supply an advanced alien civilization with energy and that star died in some way, perhaps through a conventional nova process, or perhaps it became a black hole or something along those lines, and the megastructure expanded outward in order to protect itself from this energetic event, and then just remained there when there was no longer any use for it. It continues to function, but it doesn't have a civilization to support anymore. In other words, what we are looking at is the remnant of a dead dead civilization. Perhaps this was even done intentionally. The megastructure expanded outward as the star died and continued to expand outward in a perfectly spherical fashion in order to announce the presence of the civilization to the rest of the galaxy. Perhaps if we examine the center of this sphere, the nexus of where the megastructure may have existed in its distant past, we might find the remnants of a civilization there or at least a dead star that didn't die as the result of a supernova, but rather just died in the same manner that our star will eventually pass away. And this is the last relic of a civilization that once thrived on this star or in the solar system that surrounded it, and they wanted to leave evidence of their passing. Or, perhaps, an intelligence exists within the megastructure itself. Perhaps this is the remnant of the civilization that still lives as a machine civilization. And the reason it's so big is because since it doesn't have a star to feed off of anymore, it has to survive off of starlight, which is far, far fainter and doesn't have nearly as much energy as a sun does, and so therefore it requires a structure of this magnitude in order to survive sustain this artificial intelligence. The possibilities are endless, of course, and many of you are probably thinking very far-fetched, but until astronomers come up with a viable theory as to how a supernova remnant could have sustained such a spherical shape over such a long period of time, and yet not radiate any energy whatsoever except radio energy, I think it's sensible to explore all alternatives, including artificial official ones until we have a solid answer. So, as promised, here's my update on my Australia trip. A lot of folks may not actually be aware of this amongst the UFO enthusiasts and alien enthusiasts who watch my channel because I haven't released any content that's alien-related since I rolled out this trip. But I'm going to be spending five weeks, at least that's the plan, five weeks in Australia and New Zealand. During that time, I'm going to be visiting my more than 13,000 subscribers in 
this region. I'm going to be traveling to spaceports all across Australia and New Zealand. Right now, there is a new blossoming private space flight industry taking place in Australia, something that deserves some in-person coverage just like the situation in Europe that I did my best to cover a few years ago and I'm continuing to cover right now. But on top of that, during my journeys, I'm going to be looking into UFO incidents as well. And the most famous of these, of course, is the Westall incident that took place in Melbourne, Australia in 1966. Hundreds and hundreds of people saw whatever these things were that appeared over Melbourne and actually reportedly landed in Melbourne. At least some witnesses attest to that. And of course, wasn't that long ago, three years prior to my birth date, that all of this transpired. So there's still some witnesses left to this incident. But these witnesses aren't going to be around for much longer, and I'd really like to take this opportunity to interview these folks in person. Obviously, I'm going to be checking in with the various news agencies in Melbourne ahead of time to try to make contact with these folks, but also... If you live in the Melbourne region and you or somebody that you know was involved in this incident, witnessed these objects, or know somebody who did, had family members who did, etc., I want to hear from you. My email address is in the description. I'd very much like to talk to you about an interview when I arrive. And if this is something you'd like to support, because up to this point, 26% of my goal of the fundraising goal to get me to Australia for five weeks, all of that has already been reached in 48 hours. It's mind boggling. I can't believe the generosity so far. People giving as little as $5 and as much as 200 And let me tell you, all of that put together, it doesn't matter how small the donor, it all makes a massive difference. If you'd like to help Help out. The GoFundMe is linked in the description and also in the comments. But on top of that, if you'd like to support it by picking up piece, a piece of merchandise, that's another way to do it. Or if you'd like to support me on Patreon, check the description for that as well. And I'm looking forward to meeting all of you in Australia and New Zealand this September and October. Thanks very much for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. And as always, stay angry about space.